The loop cut tool in Blender is essential to understand for modeling almost anything. So in this video, we're going to go through the ins and outs of that tool, where you can use it, tips and tricks for how to use it, and why it might not look like it's working. So let's begin with the default cube. I'll select the cube, zoom in, go into edit mode with tab. So that's edit mode just up here. And now notice I'm in vertex mode and you can see all the vertices highlighted here. The loop cut tool itself is down here and you can actually click on this icon and therefore use the loop cut tool this way. I actually find it a really awkward way of using the loop cut tool because I can't use the wheel of my mouse, as you can see here, it's zooming in and out to create more cuts. And generally I don't use any of these tools down here. I use the keyboard shortcuts. If you hover over the tool, you can see the shortcut there. It does say shift spacebar, but that's to actually get to a tool menu. Control R at the end there is the loop cut shortcut. So if you can't remember it, hover over here and you'll be able to see it again. So let's go back to my selection box tool just at the top here and we'll press Control R. Now we can see the loop cut wanting to cut through these faces. Now the loop cut tool will only go through quads. So that's any face with four edges. We'll come back to that later. Now, as I said, you can use the wheel of your mouse to create more cuts and obviously the other way for less. And there's two clicks you have to do. I'll do a cut this way. The first click, will set the cut and the amount of cuts. So we've got one cut down the middle here in this direction here. The second click is to where you want to position it. If you want to position it in the middle, you can actually right click and then it will kind of override any movement and put it into the middle. However, I'll just quickly undo that. Control R, left click to set the direction I want my loop cut. And then I can always left click if I want to set that position. So a nice and easy tool to use. What about if it's not working? Well, I've got a new scene here and if I press Shift A to add, mesh and then grid. I'll zoom into that, go into edit mode with tab. I've got my grid full of faces here. And if I press control R, you can see I'm cutting through these quads. However, if I go to edge mode with two, so that's edge mode up here, select one of these edges. So I'll select this one and press control X. That's to dissolve an edge. Incidentally, if I press X to delete and then edges, it deletes the faces around it as well. So undo that and press X and you can see the dissolve edge there, the shortcut being Control X. Okay, so we've got a N gone in here, so a face with more than four sides. And if I press Control R and try and go through this, it says I don't want to go in there. So if your loop cut isn't going around your mesh for some reason, you might have an N gone or in fact a triangle. Let's do a triangle, I'll just undo that and then go to vertex mode, choose two vertices and press J to join. Now we've got two triangles. And again, if I press Control R, you can see it doesn't want to go through the triangles. The interesting thing here though is if I do a cut here, so left click once to set the direction, left click again to set position. When I press Control R, you can see it's now going through this quad, but it's changed the direction of my edge flow, which can actually be useful. Notice how it doesn't want to go through this one here, that's still a triangle, so I could do a loop cut here, so I'll double left click there. And when I press Control R now, we get some interesting edge flow because we've actually got a quad base mesh again but it's a kind of weird distorted quad base mesh with, with strange edge flow. And that's kind of one of the keys to hard surface modeling and pinching and supporting loops. So it's a useful thing to understand. So back to our original cube into edit mode, we've got this loop cut going down the middle. Depending on when you do the loop cut, it often puts you into edge mode. That's so you can go in and start editing these edges. You can select an edge loop by pressing Alt left click. So you can see all that edge loop is selected and it's very handy, you can press GG to edge slide and you can slide this along. So it's almost like the first click of the edge loop if you want to change the position. I'll press escape to undo that movement. Now what I want to do here is take this top edge here, G then Z to move it upwards. So we've got a little house there, lovely. And press control R. Now I'm gonna set the direction to go around the middle here. So that's one click and I want to move it into position. But notice what happens to the loop cut when I do this. It kind of changes the further we go down, changes the shape, and the further we go up, it starts to conform to the shape at the top of the object. So what it's doing for each of our points where it intersects one of these loops, it's kind of taking an average. So you can see about here is 90% of the way up the shape, but in the longer edge where my mouse roughly is, it's not going up as far as the shorter edge, which is just underneath my mouse here. Well, what we can do, you can see some keyboard shortcuts down the bottom of your screen. There's one at the very end called even. So I can press the E key and that changes it to conform to one of the edges. In this case, the one at the bottom of 
my little house model that I've got here. But what if I want it to conform to the top? Well, that's where we need to flip this even. And you can see down the bottom here, under my cursor, we've now got an F key. So we can flip the even. So if I press F, it will flip it to the opposite shape. And you can see here, it matches the shape at the top. So when I'm pressing F here, we'll change it to the bottom shape and F again, will change it to the top shape. And if I turn off even with E, you can see we've now lost the F key down here. That's because it's just doing that kind of percentage of the way up. So if I want to have a loop cut at the top here, let's say I want to do some sort of roof, I would press E and I might have to press F to flip. And in this case, the F key is turned on so I can match it to the roof. And then I would be able to go in to face mode and start maybe extruding these out and then extruding these out somehow. And then we've got a beautiful looking roof. Now it's worth just quickly pointing out that if I press Control R, let's do a cut across this direction. So left click to set that direction, left click again to set its position. I can always go down to the dialog box here and I've got these same options of things like even and flipped. So I can conform to the bottom there or conform to the top there or turn them both off and have that average. We've got number of cuts, so that's the same as the wheel of the mouse. And then you've got weird things like the smoothness or the fall off. But to be honest, I can't think of a situation where I have ever used the other ones. Shame on me. So hopefully that's cleared up a few things about the loop cut tool. And you can do your lovely loop cuts to your heart's content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.